All right, let's review the estimate activity durations process of the sixth edition of the pin mock now that we've been through the crowd training material and let's recap what we learned about the processes and the inputs and the outputs and tools and techniques. So obviously starting with the inputs, well, we have our plans. So there's many different plans that we have and simply put your project management plans those plans could be obviously the schedule you know how things are supposed to be timed and the terminology you're to use and all those kind of features and functions but also to things like quality and um, your scope baseline and all those other activities or um, plans that you have are going to also be part of those plans that you're going to be using as an input to determine the activity durations also you're going to have various different project documents and those project documents well one should be your activity list because well that's the list of things that you need to <laughs> estimate and those are your activities which you're going to estimate based off of um, also though you could have your assumption log and your what you've learned so your risk registers uh, all this different type of documentation that might exist in your project now, also beyond that, um, you're going to have, as almost always, your enterprise environmental factors, which is those, you know, those influences that exist within your organization, your industry, the economy, whatever it might be. But we're just going to simply call that your enterprise environmental factors, or EEF. And then uh, we also have our various different policies and procedures and templates and everything else. So I'm just going to call that OPAs or what we're gonna um, be calling your <laughs> sorry my binder is getting pretty messy here <laughs> but your um, organizational process assets um, those are all your various different inputs and then from those inputs we could use different tools and techniques to help us estimate the activity and how long it's going to be so aka durations well first and foremost we probably know a thing or two about how we've done things in the past or we have experienced people um, so if I am gonna ask you to build me something and you've done it before well then you're gonna put that thinking cap on and you are going to tell me well based on my expert judgment I think it should take this long well sure enough I'm gonna trust your decision maybe it's a team of people maybe it's based on uh, some industry standard that we've read about or it's just everyone has agreed that yep yep that's the way or about how long it should take in our group and we're gonna use that information it doesn't have to be the only thing we use but um, if I ask somebody who's done it a hundred times how long is it gonna take well I probably will trust that decision or at least use that as a very good estimate um, but also we could use analogies so if we're doing this thing now and we did something uh, similar let's just call it B uh, yeah they're a little different because you know it's a different time or different people doing it but you know it's sort of like that and so we can use the analogy that well we did it this way and it was uh, let's say uh, two days and so we can approximate that well maybe it will take about two days again um, we can use the three-point estimate where we're gonna say well most likely it's this amount of time and then maybe worst case scenario very pessimistically you're gonna say ah oh, it's this or hey it's really good and we're gonna say you know an uh, optimistic low value but you're gonna try to equate these three and weigh them so that the most likely gets a little bit more weight and so this three point estimate will give us that bell curve in which to then use as our at least a mathematical way to equate for the risks that could occur you know the the good and the bad and the ugly and give us some kind of um, estimation and if we've done a really good job about breaking down the work and that way we can look at how these different pieces of the puzzle or our efforts need to be done we can then go from the bottom and shoot our way up and so that's our bottom up estimate and that means it really requires a lot of detail and information and the more granular we get well then obviously the better when we roll things up the better our estimates should be and then we also have um, meetings to figure out well what do we think and why and how come and talk things over 
And then even with that meetings and the conversations that we have, well, eventually we got to decide what is the best estimate because it's a guess, but we got to decide somewhere. And so there has to be a way we make some sort of decision. How that decision is made? Well, there's various different techniques to make that decision. So we have the uh, expert judgment. We have using the analogies. We have the three-point estimates at the bottom up meetings and making our decisions and all of those equate to our tools and techniques. When we have our various different estimates that we guess or as a team we're satisfied and, and are working with and continuously revising because we should progressively elaborate on our estimations, we should get to some kind of output. Well, that output, the obvious one would be the duration. So how long, and let's put a clock here, do we think this will be from A to B? And it's just guess, it's nothing um, exact, but it is as exact as we can get it based on all these various different estimates and techniques. And as I mentioned, we're going to keep revising them over and over again as new information comes in or we are able to do so based on our progressive elaboration. So that is our duration estimates, which is first and foremost, but based on that, well, why? And so we should have a reason or what we call a basis of these estimates. Like what gives us the right to say or what are we basing basing it on? Because, you know, if we have more information that negates it or supports it, well, that rationale should either hold up or if it doesn't, we need to change it. And um, and then likewise, since we're using project documents and one be in your activity lists, well, we probably should update that activity list and any other project document that uh, also is affected based on our learning from this process. So that's a quick review of the estimate estimate activity durations process of the sixth edition of the PMBOK from the crowd training.